So today I'm going to make a different kind of mask. My neighbor um, owns a motorcycle shop and he asked me to make what I call a slip mask, um, but it's, you know, a dust covering face mask for motorcycle riders that goes from the nose down to the neck. He's asked me to customize it with his, um, then, you know, the letters for his motorcycle club. So I'm going to use my Cricut to do that. Uh, the fabric I'm working with is called Modal and it, it feels kind of like cotton, but it's actually a, a semi-synthetic. It's made from um, the cellulose of beech trees, believe it or not, and it's labeled eco-friendly. Um, it's a little tricky to work with because it's really stretchy and it comes in 60, 60 inches wide. So you kind of have to have a big space um, to work with it. But I have guesstimated, this is the first one I'm making, so I'm guessing that a piece 22 by 12 should make a sufficient face covering. The 22 might be a little too long to go around the head, um, but worst case scenario, we can always just add a second stitch and make it a little tighter if we need. Um, I highly recommend using a rotary cutter and a ruler because this stuff is so tricky and it'll roll up on you. And if you're cutting with scissors, you're going to end up with a jagged edge, which won't look very cool when you're riding your motorcycle. You want to have nice, clean cuts when you're working with anything that's a jersey type material um, because the edge will roll up on itself. Um, and then you don't need to hem it. Another good thing to use it for, if you've seen my video about making jersey yarn in replacement for elastic for face masks, this stuff's great. I mean, it's super soft. It can be washed just like cotton can. Um, it's cool. It's uh, uh, absorbent, you know, so I figure, I don't ride motorcycles, but I figure if I was and I, it's a hot day, I definitely want something cool and absorbent if it's going to be around my face. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put my pins, my glass headed pins right here in the middle, because when I place the uh, lettering on here, I want it to be in the center of their face. So I can take this, the pins make it real easy to drape and fold the fabric right down the center since they have some weight to it. I'm going to press this with my heat press, but put it on a very low setting because because this is synthetic, you can actually melt the fibers uh, if your iron is set too hot. That's why your iron has a synthetic setting, so use it. Otherwise, the crease you put in there may stay there forever. It'll literally be burned into the fabric. I'm just folding this in half, and I'm going to press it on the edge where my pin is real quick just to give me an easy guideline for later. And that'll make it easier to line up the lettering. I've got a piece of white vinyl that's three by five inches roughly. I'm gonna put the shiny side down on my cutting mat. And I'm gonna use my Cricut to have the letters for his motorcycle club cut out. Now I buy all of my vinyl on Amazon. It's way cheaper. Um, personally, I don't really like the Cricut brand. I haven't had the best success with it and it's really expensive. I've purchased several types on Amazon um, that are way more affordable and I've had really good results with it. Next, I'm going to uh, weed out the design from the vinyl. Okay, I'm not sure if you can see this, but there's a crease down the center here from where I gently pressed it. Um, I'm going to put this logo on. You know, I'm going to fold it and just pinch it a little so I know where the center is. And I don't want it to be right on top of their nose, so I'm going to just put it down, eyeballing it. 
um, couple inches. Also, because this is a jersey knit, this part's going to probably roll a little. Um, so hopefully that'll be good. Now this is going to be tricky because the vinyl comes with instructions for the temperature to attach it to your fabric, but this is a synthetic fabric, so you can't always go as hot as what the vinyl wants. So if you were to use um, a cotton fabric and not a synthetic fabric, you know, you could go straight with what the vinyl is heat-wise is recommended for because cotton can take a lot of heat. Um, with something synthetic, you may have to use a lower temperature and just press it more than once. So I've got this laid out and spread across my heat press. Obviously, if you don't have a heat press, just use an ironing board. Um, and a regular iron. I am not using a pressing cloth. Fingers crossed that this does not melt. And this calls for 15 seconds. Okay, let's see how it came out. It looks like it's on there pretty good. If the plastic peels off easily, that's a good sign. Some vinyls are cold peel and some are hot peel, which means some you can peel off like this while it's still warm and others you need to wait until it cools off. I personally prefer hot peel because I'm busy and I don't like waiting. So I also prefer easy weed. When it's labeled easy weed on Amazon, it means it's easier to pick out all those bits and pieces. This looks really good. The other thing I want to look for is to see if I can see the um, lines of the fabric in the vinyl to know that the vinyl is really set down in there. And this looks pretty good. So now we're going to um, sew this together. All right, I'm just gonna thread my machine here with some black um, isocord thread. Now, isocord typically is an embroidery thread, but I love isocord. I use it for everything. I started using it when I was doing uh, embroidery in my art quilts, which is, you know, what my main business is. Um, but I've used this for everything from garments to t-shirt quilts to baby bibs all of the face masks i've been making that i've been donating um my machine likes it you know it just it never gives me any trouble and you know there'll be sewers out there that say oh well that's an embroidery thread but i don't really care i mean if it works it works i love it and it's nice and shiny so i support if you're out there watching sponsor me because i buy a lot of your thread <laughs> I really like these super big spools, so when you sew as much as I do, it makes more sense to buy in bulk. So we're not going to use a, a straight stitch. You can either use a zigzag stitch or um, depending on what kind of sewing machine you have, you may have um, special, special stitches made just for sewing um, jersey type fabric. Again, like I said, the stuff is tricky. It can get away from you. Helps if you lick your fingers. Typically I sew with a Microtex needle. It's nice and sharp. It works really well for my art quilts. Uh, I rarely change my needle unless I'm going to do something like den denim, which is real heavy duty, or jersey. Um, you can buy special needles. This is labeled sh uh, Stretch. It's by Schmetz, which is my favorite needle company. Um, sometimes they're also labeled jersey needles, but the point of them is they don't pierce the fabric so much as they push through the knit, so they won't um, tear it up as much as um, another kind of needle might. And if you don't know how to change the needle on your machine, there's usually just a little screw right here. And you pop out the old one, slip the new one in. You know, and a lot of people don't realize that needles get dull. You don't need to always wait until you break your needle to change it. If your machine is starting to act up and it's, you know, the thread is getting shredded or it just sounds like it's punching through the fabric as opposed to just gliding through, you may just need a new needle. Because I usually work with 100% cotton, I rarely use um, pins when I sew. Um, but because this stuff is so curly and stretchy, you're really going to need some pins um, to hold the edges together. Now, 
Make sure you don't sew over your pin. That's a great way to break a needle. And uh, you don't want a needle flying off into your eyeball. All right, so like I said, I'm gonna be using a zigzag stitch. If you look at the owner's manual of your sewing machine, it almost definitely has a recommendation for the type of stitch you should use if you're sewing jersey. Now I'm gonna have to stop, make sure this stuff doesn't curl up on me. Unlike a lot of my other projects, uh, I like to go fast and make things quick and easy. Uh, this is definitely a slow and steady wins the race. Now, if you're impatient, you could do a straight stitch. It's just not gonna hold the jersey as well. It may tear over time. But if this is the kind of thing where you're just making, say, like a Halloween costume or something that doesn't need to hold up for a long time, you could do that. <clears throat> now, it is extremely difficult to backstitch on a stretchy fabric like this. So I just move it back and then my machine has a nice little automatic uh, knot. So that's one of the great things. So it's going to be a little funky and ruffly just because it's that jersey type of fabric. That's okay. Okay, so we started out with 22 inches and I used about a half inch seam allowance, maybe a little bit more. Um, so we're gonna, this is the moment of truth. We're gonna turn it inside out, try it on. And my boyfriend always says I have a big head, so if it fits, we're good. All right, that looks pretty good. It's pretty cool. It feels nice. Um, it is eh, a little loose. I probably may come in another half inch or so for me personally. Now I'll take this to the man that I'm making it for. He's a biker, he's a big guy, so this may be perfect for him. Um, you know, anytime you're making a fa face mask or something, you, you're going to have to tweak it a little bit because not everybody's head is the same size. So, um, but I like this. It feels nice. It's definitely the length is perfect. So 12 inches is good and 22 inches, give or take an inch or two. Um, the next trick is going to be when we put this through the wash, will it shrink? So if it shrinks a little, then, you know, it'll probably fit me perfect after a wash. So I hope you guys like this tutorial. You could do all kinds of cute stuff with this. And um, let me know if you have any questions.